welcome back to Live and Run, or should I say Run and Live. Um, I, li- I like the term uh, Run Free and Live. Um, it used to be Running With Me, and I chose this name because I, I can shoot. I, the way I want to explain it is Running Saved My Life. And it's hard to talk about the dark times. I know we all have dark times. My dark times are probably no no different than anybody else's. Uh, I, I understand now, looking back, that life is hard for those who are going through it. And when you're going through it, you feel like it's the worst time ever. And that no one knows what you're going through, no one understands, and you just want it to stop. And I get that. What's got me through over the years is the running. And when I first started, I I was put into a box of how to run, where to run, when to run, and all the good stuff that goes with it. I don't know if you can relate to the people who you guys run run into where um, I remember hearing the run forest run when I was a kid because I tried to run and was made fun of for it. Um, Track was not as popular. I mean, the other sports, because there's big national teams, I feel they have more of the um culture i guess if you want to say but it's almost like they're rooted for more than the running community is or at least where i was and still am sometimes um and there's some places where when you go outside for a run and it's cold outside it's dark or whatever the case may be outside or where you're going people just look at you like what is wrong with you but i find it interesting because we were all children before the age of five we run everywhere and I've always wondered, when did it change? When did you go from loving running kid, go, go, go there, go, I'll race you, and the kid runs. It doesn't matter who you are, you just run. But yet there's a, come as an age where it's not the cool thing to run, or oh my God, that's so far, or whatever you want to hear. You hear this, and it's so crazy to me. Anyway, I heard that most of my growing up um, childhood about running, even to the point where I grew up, uh, the people that were supposed to care for me, that running is not a sport. You can't do anything with it. Why are you doing it? It's stupid. And you name the words, they used them. All the all the good stuff that you hear. Um, I'm glad to see nowadays it's more celebrated. And it feel, at least it feels like to me, maybe because I try to reach out to these social clubs that actually, or, and people that run, I feel like there's more of a kinship with it. But I felt very isolated when it comes to the running community. Even when I started running, when I was in the military, and I started running twice a day. I would run uh, in the morning before formation. And, and actually, I would do it before our, our PT sessions because I started noticing during the runs that the runs that we did in the units were not as fast, I should say. Because when you start running every day, you get better at it. And... The only way you don't get better at running is if you don't really try. If you go out there and just jog, you get a little better, but you won't get really good better until you start actually focusing on, okay, today, today I'm going to run faster. Or today I'm gonna, but if you just go out and jog, there's nothing wrong with it. But you actually be a better runner by doing something and out there j- jogging, whatever it is, than just not doing it. It just happens. And in the military, just like anywhere else, you're going to have people that know they have to do it and they do it, but they relish against it and they only do because they have to and the days that they're not required to they won't and there's nothing wrong with that and i get that there's people out there like that and that's fine you do it you should do you i get that so for me i would run before and then i would run the run with the group and then what happens is i would run in the evening the evening wouldn't be as much as the morning but i started noticing that i would run about 15 miles a day at one point when I started actually putting the gas. So I was probably putting in, um, I, I took one Sundays off. So if you think about 50 miles a day, that's probably close to what, 80, 80, 90 miles a week, roughly, give or take. But I've been realizing it. I just wanted to get out there. And this is where I lost my my 80 pounds over six months in my first deployment uh, because I was that's where I started. But I was known as the run guy. You're that guy that runs all the place because they would see me just out there doing it. I would just, be, I would just go. And you would think that would have started this whole train of, well, if you, this, this is over 10 years ago. 
um, that that would be the catalyst and that would be the start and spark of somebody who went far and did great things running. Nope, I, that's not what happened to me. I went down the rabbit hole of addiction, self-pity. Uh, I, I, I've been to rehab twice, uh, lost everything where I became homeless. And I actually uh, <laughs> um, att- attempted suicides for multiple out there. And just the thoughts and just the planning of the, the actual suicide itself, uh, which is not pretty. Those all happened in the, in the span of these last 10 years. And what kept me going every day, believe it or not, it sounds like a lethal weapon movie um, uh, scene where... Uh, it's just the job. That's what gets me every single day. It's not for me. It was the running, getting up to run every day, seeing the progression was great. It was it was weird. I, like I could drink like a fish, and then run like crazy. Um, not, I can't do that much anymore. Um, maybe because now I'm so healthy, that it's different. <laughs> but I, I remember getting getting a bottle of wine and sharing with somebody else, and I drink most of it, and then next day running a ten mile run. A little dehydrated, but be able to do it. And this is when you know you're really bad, is when you know how much you can drink, how much water you need, so you can you can function the next day. That's when you know you have a problem. <laughs> I I knew I had that problem. But what happened was, running basically saved my life. But it had to happen on my terms. My way. And that's why I went against having a coach for so long until this past year. It's hard to believe today is January 17th, and I'm only 17 days in since I first started talking to this coach and started working with him. So I'm in roughly week three of this, and it's gone by quick, and I'm learning from him. But for all these years, I didn't want one to coach, and I made some great gains, did some great runs. Um, but maybe if I would have added the coach earlier, it would have been better for me. But I think I had to go through this turmoil the way it did, and I had to learn what I needed in life. So the whole concept of a run free and live is I had to run free and be me before I could really live. And I'm still not doing the live part that well because let me just break down how this plays out. So I'm still in debt. Uh, we all have, we have the college loans, credit cards and everything. Even though I filed bankruptcy, it didn't wipe out all the student loans, which it's, it's so stupid now that it's stupid to me. It feels like to me that I was dumb at, at the time. I thought all the debt would be gone. Cause, but, and when I went through it, the lawyers like just kind of put the numbers in. And I realized that even though I went through bankruptcy, it didn't really get rid of everything I needed to get rid of. And the student loans came back. And then there was part, stuff that came from years back I never even knew. And I put myself in this position. So it was almost better off not going through bankruptcy, but I did anyway. And so I'm still dealing with that. So now I'm trying to survive and go through. And I went through last summer where I was like, you know, I'm just going to work to the bone, make as much money as possible, work four, five, six jobs, whatever it takes, and just make sure that every moment is being made money. And I did. And then, you know, I realized if I die right now, it's not worth it. And it isn't. At least to me, it's not worth it. And I wasn't really living then. And I said, what kind of life is this? I mean, maybe if I was 21, I did until I was 25, then the rest of my life, great. But, I mean, I'm pushing 40. And then I'll be 45 and then start your life. And so, and I'm like, this running thing, I really want I really want to make it happen. I really want to run professionally one day. And will it be with sponsorships? It might not be. My way of, of trying to go for running professionally, it might be different than what we see. And I think it will be. And I think it's a good thing the way I want to go about it. And one day I'll talk about it. But there's nothing wrong with going on life at your terms. Even though for so long I didn't want to do life in my terms because I wanted to fit into the group and everything. So that's kind of basically why I say I haven't really learned free. Oh, no, I haven't. Sorry. I didn't explain it fully. So I am. I got, I got a good job finally. And it took me a long time to find it. I thought about years. And I had to go through all the hoops, get learn what I had to learn, uh, get interview how to interview. I had to learn how to interview. I had to actually learn how to do the resume right, and all these different things to get to where the job. And that'd be great. And I find that when I'm not busy, I tend to want to spend something. We all do. We want to eat or something, right? So 
I keep all my stuff stuff together. How, sorry, how to keep all my stuff together is just stay busy all week long. And know that if it's a year or two or three that I have to get rid of all the debt that I, I have, I can do it. But you got to keep every single moment working. So my day starts like this. Uh, 2.30 or 3 a.m. is wake up, depending on how the run is. I get up, I have to warm up, wake up, whatever. It's about roughly about a 45-minute stretch, full body, before I do anything. Because that's what my body needs to get going. I feel like I get better when I do that. The workout's better. The run's better. And then it's the pull-up, push-up workout, and then the run. The run could last a few miles, up to maybe a mile and a half or two, depending on if it's a long way or not. And then when I come back, I do a half-hour stretch down. That could last three hours or four hours, depending on the day. Which is why I see 3 a.m. at 7 a.m. I got to be at work for 8. Plus, you have to shower, get stuff to eat, go, travel to work, all that fun stuff. Then I'm at work all day. And at the end of, at the end of work, uh, it could be 5 o'clock, it could be 6, maybe if I have to work late. And then I have a college class that's required by work. Um, so good thing that they're paying for it. That's two hours in the evening that's required that I put into the college class. And then it's bedtime. That's my day, Monday through, through Friday. Saturdays, I get more leeway because I'm not at work, which is great. So I'm able to sleep a bit more if I have to. But also, I'm able to work on me. Because before I started the college classes, I was working on me. So for the past five months or so before this college class started, I was taking those two hours at the college, and I was working on me. I have the books I've been reading. I've been doing journaling. I started meditations, um, exercises to kind of control my brain, different ways to live. And now I feel like I'm actually living a little better. I still feel like I'm existing, not living fully, only because I don't, I'm not doing what I, what I want to do uh, with runs. Um, would I do this job if I didn't have to? No. But then again, how many people out there do the jobs because they want to? Not everyone does. A lot of us do the job because we need a paycheck. Um, one day, I hope that this running will take over and I can switch over and the running thing is my, is my job. And then things that come with running, whether it be, I don't know what's going to be. I'm thinking like the crazy thing, like, like appearances or speaking or book writing or whatever it is. Maybe that's, maybe it's none of it. I don't really know what's going to happen, but maybe that will be something different because if you love what you do, if you do 12-hour days of it, you don't care because it doesn't feel like work. Right now, work feels like work. Because it's like the time is like, I don't want to do this, but I have to and I do it. So that's kind of why I feel like I'm not really living, but I'm getting there to where I want to live. And now I'm actually putting all the energy and effort. <laughs> I know this has been a long winded about the run free and live, but this is basically why I call it run free and live. Run free to be me, do things my way. Um, not saying like my way or the highway, but like, be who I am, not lie, not cheat about it, not try to hide who I am, but be truly me, run the way I have to. And also, that comes with the price. If I want to make the elite teams, I have to do what's required of us. Not Everyone can put the workouts in. Does everyone stretch? No. Does everyone do the recovery? Like, it's either ice bag, prior chamber, uh, normal tech fits, uh, massages, um, all this other stuff costs money. I'm actually putting the money into it. Yes, I have this debt I had to pay. And some, some people out there would say, we should pay the debt first. I think, well, I would like to make this thing work. So I figured out a plan where the debt we paid off in a certain period. But I can do all this as well. And this co- all the costs money. And I have it out. And this is, for me, I have no family, uh, no wife, no children, none of that. So I don't see it's anything else. It's, there's no point of just... just being in a cave and just getting the money and just try to survive and then live life eventually when the winter's over and the money's all, all gone and then I can actually enjoy life. I'm going to try to make my life my life. I don't know how many people I've met who uh, started a business or started their own journey and they, they put they put the far out. They were like credit cards and everything. And they were just all, they were so, they were bankrupt and everything. And then they finally made it and now they're doing great. They didn't sit there in a cave and try to save every single penny. I'm like, what kind of life is that? For 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you're counting your pennies. And 30 years goes by, you're still counting your pennies. That's too expensive. I don't want to live that life. That's why I don't want to live. So run free and live. That's basic. Hopefully I explained it fully. Um, maybe I didn't explain it fully. Maybe I have to go back into it. But let me know <laughs> if I did a good job or not. And by the way, 
If I can overcome everything, so can you. I've overcome homelessness more than once, addiction, uh, rehab stints, um, depression, suicide, right? Uh, to the point where they thought I was bipolar at one point, and I realized I'm not bipolar. I just had a traumatic childhood. I mean, the physical and mental abuse alone could probably put anyone into PTSD, which is what they tell me I have. Um, but I come to realize this. You can label me any way you want. You're a survivor. You're a victim. You're this or that, right? You have PTSD. You have this disorder. All that stuff. You can do that. And if it helps you in your brain, go for it. I'm just not choosing to participate in your labeling. I am who I am. I decided that I would be better every day. And I'm, I'm humble and I'll listen and be open to stuff. But in the end, I live with myself 24-7. Nobody else does. So I have to make decisions with everything I know up to this point and how I look at the world, how I view it, and then also live in this world and how I want to live and feel. Because the day it comes where I die, I can either, I can either be be like, I did the best I could, I didn't do everything, but I, I'm okay with where, what happened. Or I could be like, I could be, uh, why, why? I should have, should have, could have, would have. Oh, I think regret is key, and I do regret. I regret quitting buds. I regret uh, not taking a job at a certain point um, that I should have taken years ago. I regret not starting uh, the business at Amazon um, back in 2010, 11 when I first heard about it. I, I regret just not taking a chance on myself over 10 years ago on the running, which I should have. When I ran my first marathon, I was running 625 pace. This is over a decade ago. In 10 years, you... You don't think I could have gotten faster? Hell yeah, I could have. I put the effort of time, yes. Did I believe myself? No. So now, uh, I'm living my way. Run free and live. Thank you for listening, and have a good day.